Hi guys, it is Tuesday, my favorite day of the week. I think it's because it's Jersey. I think that's why it's my favorite day of the week. But tonight it's gonna be the series finale and then we'll have three, um, a three part reunion. So hopefully I have a couple more weeks of Tuesdays being my Jersey day. Um, I'm not here to talk about the Real Housewives in New Jersey. We might touch on it because there's a lot, of course, going around on the blogs right now. But I actually wanna talk Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Erica Jane, she was on Twitter tweeting away. She was at it again, guys, and I caught it, so I wanna talk about it. But before we get started, please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything that I have posting. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Erica Jane was on Twitter and she posted this cryptic tweet, which was cryptic for some, but not for all. And it basically said, you're obsessed with me. I had to talk about you in therapy today. You're ill and you won't leave me alone. And we all know that she is talking about Ronald Richards. Um, if you don't know who Ronald Richards is, he's an attorney from Beverly Hills and he found his Twitter following by tweeting about the Tom and Erica case. Now that's important to remember guys because Erica did not want a legal commentary giving um, legal updates on her and Tom's case on Twitter and she surely did not want viewers to have access to someone that they could ask legal questions to about what was going on with their case, okay? That's a big deal. Um, it was a confusing case because, what you know, what's in their favor, and it's confusing to people because if it was you or I, we would be getting charged criminally, which means our consequences would be jail or prison or community service or probation, okay? They're in civil court, which means people are suing them. The victims are suing them and they're able to show that Tom and Erica spent the money, okay, allegedly. So it's a whole different sort of set of rules, okay? It's way different and it's not something that the common person is necessarily familiar with unless if you've been sued or you've had to sue someone. You're not gonna know. And it's hard for people and viewers to like fathom, wait, they stole all this money from orphans and victims, but they're not being charged criminally by the state? No, no, the state is not charging them with any crimes. They have not been charged with any crimes. Um, not even the federal government. I thought that we would see charges come later. I had heard that the feds had came to his office, Tom Girardi's office, and like, um, as bad suits and went in and cleared everything out. I mean, Tom Girardi's been around Hollywood since the beginning of time, okay? He had paper files. He had files on everyone. So I think that that's why they haven't been charged criminally and I don't know if we'll ever see them be charged criminally, which is just insane because if it was the average person, if it was any of us, um, the first thing they would do is we would be charged criminally. So it's just very crazy that they are only seeing the inside of a civil courtroom. That's why it's confusing to people. That's why Erica didn't want him on there answering any of our questions because she wanted to piggyback off of that. She wanted to be like, look, I'm not in trouble. Like, we're not gonna go to jail. We're not this, we're not that. Like anything she could do to try to change the narrative from Tom was stealing from orphans and victim victims. I mean, anything is better than that, okay guys, <laughs> anything. So he replies, right? Okay, Ronald Richards replies and basically says like, Something about Tom um, being the only person that would think him and Erica could spend $25 million of victims' money and not have to pay it back. Something very, very harsh like that. So Erica is really trying to take shots here and she's just missing. She missed an LVP when she said that her breast smelled like garlic and cigarettes. She missed whenever she shot at Garcelle with the whole book thing. And now she's missing again, taking a shot at Ronald Richards. Um, if the name sounded familiar to you, we have seen Ronald Richards before. Um, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills back in the day, Taylor Armstrong. Do you guys remember who I'm talking about? We're going to get to see her soon. Actually, I should do a video and get you guys up to speed on her because she was, you know, in the seasons of very early. This damn light keeps falling. She was in the really early seasons of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Um, and she's about to be on the girls, the second round of the girls, the ultimate girls trip on Peacock. She was actually doing some confessional looks. And so you guys are going to get to see her. She's really, I thought she was sweet, but she had a husband named Russell and allegedly there was domestic violence in the relationship. Now we didn't really see this right away as viewers until like her second season in maybe, and then it was brought up on camera, okay? And this really affected, I think, their relationship and their situation because 
before the you know the it was just within the home and then it, everyone knew about it so sadly russell unalived himself and taylor was left as a single mom she eventually moved um they did film a little bit of you know the cast finding out about russell and kyle and all of that and it, it was a very very tragic um taylor then i think ended up you know meeting someone and her and her daughter moved to colorado and i think she's lived a pretty good life out there however ronald richards was her dead husband's attorney and what happened was he owed so much money out that he his business partner wanted taylor to give um up her diamond ring he wanted some bags there was a bunch of different things that he knew of value that he, um russell had purchased for taylor and he wanted those things because Russell owed him so much money when he died. So Ronald Richards, the attorney that he is, he did an interview with TMZ and said, look, you know, they, you know, Russell was trying to keep up with the, you know, the Joneses out here in Beverly Hills. And he was basically doing it because he had a wife who was on a reality show and she had to keep up too. And he was trying to keep her happy. And that's why he ended up so in debt. And that's why he ended up, you know, sadly, unaliving himself and he blamed the debt on Taylor I think but did not mention the domestic violence so I don't know he was like I said he was Russell's attorney and we saw him on TMZ a long time ago but Taylor Armstrong look out for her she's going to be coming on uh, Peacock the second you know I don't know would it be the second series the second special of the Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip so she will be on it I'll do a deep dive on her if you guys are interested I want to talk about the Kardashians because there's a lot coming out now that all these like court, you know, now that they're in court, basically. First of all, the sketches. Have you guys seen any of the sketches um, of the Kardashians in court? Oh my gosh. They are so funny. You, they are so funny. I'm going to post them on my Instagram. You got to go look at it. But here's a couple of things. Um, one, we're seeing emails between Kris Kardashian and the execs at E! And they are not good. It sounds like... She's calling um, Black China ghetto, stupid ass. She's got to go, you know, plotting behind her back basically to not give the show a season two. Now, the executive did um, testify in court under oath and say that there was it was not 100% a go yet for Robin China season two. I don't know if that's because probably Chris and E have had a long running professional relationship. So I'm sure they would probably say whatever they had to when they went to court in honor of Chris Kardashian and, and something along these lines. Um, I often wonder if that's why the Kardashians stayed with E Channel this long and just moved over to Hulu like a year ago. Um, I think maybe they were trying to stay on E's good side because they knew that they were going to be testifying in this lawsuit. Um, we're also hearing more rumors of Chloe and Trey Songs dating. And if you have not heard the allegations against Trey Songs, then you need to Google it. Um, there are lots and lots and lots of women that say the same thing. And there's even, I um, heard a guy, I forget, I forget where he was. He was saying basically that whenever Trey Songs is done, the documentary is going to be worse on Trey Songs than the R. Kelly documentary, documentary was. And if you remember, the R. Kelly one was on the Lifetime channel. And it, he does not have a good reputation. And there are a lot of girls, a very long period, have all said a lot of the same things about him and a very forceful sexual nature. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. But they keep saying that Chloe and Trey Songs dated and hung out a long, long time ago. Um, but they were since seen hanging out in LA. Now that was a couple of weeks ago. But then I had another contact bring it up again that supposedly Chloe and Trey Songs are hooking up and the sisters and the family do not like it at all. <clears throat> also, um, Christina Quinn from Selling Sunset was not on the reunion. Now we have to talk about this for a second because of the fact that everyone is shocked that she wasn't on the reunion and they're disappointed because she's a troublemaker when it comes to Selling Sunset. And I think that we all have a hard time, um, you know, really swallowing that this is on a, like an authentic reality show because a lot of people question like Tricelle's, um, 
you know, is she really this nice girl? And I don't know. I don't really feel like it's super authentic. I don't feel like the storylines are authentic. Um, I posted a lot about Christina Quinn. I like her, but I don't, I think she had a surrogate. I don't think that she gave birth or had a C-section and was in stilettos a couple of days later. I just don't buy it for one second. And now they're trying to sell us more lies. Don't you guys remember whenever the my season came out and the two of them got married, the blonde girl, I cannot remember her name and the guy, um, and they got married on the show at that, you know, like big mansion or whatever, like the, all the storylines were about the wedding and trying to find a venue and so on and so forth. And after it aired, TMZ did an article that that could, they had been married like 18 months prior. And supposedly the cast members were mad because they didn't know. And supposedly they had just eloped Mary. That's it. Mary and her boyfriend. And that Mary and her boyfriend had eloped 18 months prior, but they just didn't want to tell anyone and so on and so forth. So I felt like they did a sloppy job of selling us a really fake storyline with Mary's wedding to that guy. I just, I thought that was crappy. So also what I'm saying is, is Christina Quinn is not on the reunion and they're trying to say she's not on the reunion because she had a positive COVID test. But the only problem with that was there was another cast member that had COVID and she like videoed in. So why couldn't Christina Quinn video in? That doesn't make any sense to me. Just saying, we might be onto something there. And then lastly, I had, a, someone had commented, I made a really great point, um, referencing back to the Real Housewives of New Jersey. It's so funny because they were talking about how Evan is probably, remember when he was so mean to Bill at the restaurant at the table and he basically told Bill to get out of there? Maybe he is mad. Maybe Evan is mad at Bill for telling Jennifer that Frank had pictures or knew Evan's supposed woman that he's allegedly having an affair with. That made sense to me because I couldn't understand why Evan was being so like mean to Bill because I had never really seen that side of him be mean like that. Like he always seems very like even toned. He doesn't seem to like get upset either way too much. He's always just pretty much the same. He's like never too up or never too down. He's just always the same. Um, we see a scene, they've released it from tonight's episode where Jackie's talking to him about her eating disorder and she's saying that she didn't do very good at dinner the night before and that the stress from Teresa is uh, causing her to, um, you know, not follow her therapist advice. And I think I said this in my last video, I hope that Jackie can find a healthy, happy lifestyle that fits her because nobody should have to be stuck suffering. But the storyline is confusing and it opens a narrative up for criticism because none of the other women are talking about it with her. They don't even know about it. I think Dolores might know. We saw one scene um, where Dolores no, it was, yeah, it was, still, no, it was Marge. Yeah, it was Marge. Marge knows that she's going to therapy. So we saw one little scene where Marge and Jackie are discussing the eating disorder. And then that's it. We see little conversations that she has with Evan, but it's very uncommon for a situation like that to be going down in the housewives. Usually the women know that there is this, you know, thing going on and none of the other women know so it doesn't even seem fair that Jackie's eating disorder I don't even know if she's asking that it be kept from the other ladies she's just not sharing it I don't understand that because she knows it's going to be on national tv but you don't share it with any of the other ladies that you're actually filming with it's either a way to try to like get out of being accountable you know for what she's eating because she knows you know, the more, it's just like if you're an alcoholic, if people know that you're not drinking anymore, then they're not going to like let you drink. But if only your wife knows you're not drinking and you go to a wedding and you go up to the bar and you get a drink and you, you hide it and you drink it real quick, none of the other people are going to notice anything different because you always drink, but your wife's not going to know. So it's almost like, you know, as long as Evan's not watching, she just kind of, you know, goes back to her old eating habits that are unhealthy, but at least she's like admitting them and that is progress. But I just think that it doesn't make sense for the show for them to be going through this storyline at the end of the season for one and two, that none of the other ladies know about it. They're not able to ask her questions about her storyline, but we got to you know, ask Teresa about her, you know, husband to be and the storyline. 
Um, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me, I think. And I really love that we also saw this in the clip. I'm um, not sure if you guys saw it, but tonight we're going to see Dolores tell Margaret, like, we're not responsible. We're not letting her act anyway. Like, we're not her parents. We're not responsible for Teresa's behavior. Like, we're just not. So stop screaming about how we're supposed to keep her accountable because it's just, it's like Marge is just trying to like rally the troops and say like, you guys are just letting her act however she wants and blah, blah, you know, on and on and on. And I think even the group has maybe come to a, you know, the last day of the trip and maybe they've had enough of Marge too. Because I feel like that's kind of where they're at. They're like, listen, you've went so hard on Teresa that you've literally ruined our vacation. Like, yeah, Teresa's dead ass wrong for throwing the table of food at you. 100%. But like, you are also wrong for coming on this vacation with us and going so hard at her on the very first night that we're there when you know that the, re you know, what the results are going to be. And who knows what production was telling Teresa behind the scenes. And uh, like I said in my last video, you know, if you're like famous or you're a Bravo celebrity, you're like part of reality TV, you have to know the people that you're around. And she met him randomly. Teresa met Louie like randomly on a street by, by the Jersey Shore. So she had nobody to co-sign for him. Like if somebody sets you up on a blind date, they are co-signing for that person. They're saying, oh, that's my husband's friend from work. He's so nice. I've met him this many times. I've seen him here. Whatever the case is, like you get a rundown. Somebody co-signs for them. Somebody knows them. They know they're not stalker, murderer, rapist, chop you up in a million pieces. I mean, these are legitimate things women have to worry about when you're dating people that you don't know and you don't know anyone that knows them. So was there no background check? Was there no investigation? Was there no like any sort of who is this man that I'm going to start dating? None of that. I mean, I understand that you want a chance to get to know someone, but when you are in the light, when you're in the light, like you have to be mindful. That what if he had, you know, I, I don't know. What if he had crazy, you know, who, I don't even want to say anything sick, but what if, and he had some sort of problem and you know, we didn't look into him and she didn't do a background check and maybe he had a charge or maybe he's on like, um, like the registered sex offender list or something. It's like, those are all things. How would you know that unless if you looked into it? Like, and I'm sure that she had to have looked into him or she had to have paid someone to do some sort of a background check on him, even for the sake of the fact that she wanted to know who his exes were. I mean, that's what we do as women. When we have a new guy that we're dating, we want to know what his exes look like. I always do it. I want to, for some reason, compare myself. It's dumb. It's stupid. But... I'm not the only girl I know that, you know, does that. That's like the first thing that we do is find them on social media and find out what their ex look like. How long have they been together? How long were they broke up? You know, those sort of things. And so it's just hard for me to believe that, you know, she met him and didn't do any sort of digging or background check on him and then, you know, allowed him to go on the show with all of these skeletons in the closet. Like even the reunion, I feel like she, he should have skipped the reunion. I mean, Michael Darby skips the reunion. Why can't Louie skip the reunion? I don't understand why he had to be there. He should have skipped the reunion. He should not have filmed after Tennessee. He should have stepped back and he should have